This uh, thermal dynamics is my small plasma cutter that I use for obviously cutting up the steel, um, whether it be plate or flat bar. It, it's got a maximum cut thickness of 10 mil, which is more than enough for what I need. The only thing I've got thicker on the boat than 10 mil is the 12 mil uh, keel plate along the bottom of the keel, so that that one cut with oxy. But you know, th this is my lifeblood. I, I love this little tool. It's great for cutting out pieces, for cutting out sections. Um, but it, it it's about well, it would be five years, four and a half years old now, and the. The principle of it, it works like a plasma jet that cuts through the, the steel uh, and that's just produced by compressed air. So I use a compressor that drives it and the compressed air, this is the actual unit, I've got it open to repair it. Um, the compressed air comes in at this nozzle here through the, uh, the air, the water separator and then what happens is that the air flows throughout the nozzle the other end and it creates in combination with an arc, electric arc creates a very tiny hot cutting flame that just cuts through the steel like like through a, a hot knife through butter, it's very good. Um, the problem with these is over, over time in this heat the uh, the air lines inside the unit uh, they harden and so what happens eventually they split. Now I put it in the workshop a couple of weeks ago it cost me about 160 bucks to get this main, you can probably see it here, this main incoming air line that, that airline there comes off the back of the the air input and it comes through to this solenoid valve and when I pull the trigger on the gun um, that's what lets the air flow or stops it on or off um, and it comes out the bottom of the valve. You can see this blue pipe here well that's a new piece of pipe I've just replaced recently um, it was this black plastic style pipe here but um, not, not many weeks after getting that replaced, this one's gone as well, so I just went and, went and bought some um, some rubber air hose from the welding shop and cut a piece off and I'm actually going to replace it with that and, and I've done this in the same as a MIG welder I've done the same principle where the valve uh, pipe split and the gas pipe split, so that's what I've done so far, I've taken the old piece out and I've replaced it with this new piece and I'm just going to put some cable ties around these ends to tighten them up so they don't leak and also so they don't slip off. So uh, yeah that's the basics of um, plasma cutting repair. They're, they're pretty straightforward simple devices I mean obviously they're complex in their their, uh, their design and control but to repair uh, at this kind of level they're not too complicated so um, rather than put in and spend another hundred and sixty or so dollars I just do it myself. You can see that the air comes out through this, this brass fitting here and it comes out down through the valve uh, sorry, down through the line and you'll see it come out right at the end of that tip there you can probably just see the end of the cutting tip a tidy plasma jet flame comes out of that hole in fact, you probably can't see that, it's got a lot of slag on it I'll give it a clean and I'll show you again So there you go, I've cleaned the end of that, um, that cutting tip up, just cleaned it with a wire brush. You should be able to see now the tiny aperture in the end of that brass fitting. Out of that when you pull the trigger comes a, a, a small jet of compressed air surrounded by um, an electric arc flame that arcs to the actual metal you're cutting. And it creates a very fine, extremely hot cutting flame and it's only about I don't know, two or three mil long, um, but it definitely cuts very well up to about 10 mil plate. Anyway, I'm just going to pop these zip ties on this uh, replacement piece of hose, and hopefully that will solve any of the problems I've had, and that should last a couple of years. Now I've got a couple of cable ties I'll just pop around this hose. They're a bit fiddly in a tight space but they do work well once they're in. Now before I tighten it right up I'll just position it around where the brass fitting goes passes into the hose. And what I'll do 
Let's just use a pair of pliers on there to tighten that zip tie up. So I've got too much pressure on the actual valve itself. Once that's done, let's lift the excess off. And the same again with the bottom end. I just start that tie off so it can't come undone again and then slide it into position. Obviously this brass fitting comes goes about 10 mil into that hose, so if I put it just two or three mil from the actual fitting, I know that I'm tightening it against the internal part of the fitting. Again, I'll just use these pliers to pull it tight. And I can tell that's quite tight now because the hose or the cable tie won't rotate on the fitting, they're quite tight. So that means it's a nice tight fit. That should be a good gas seal there. So, nip the excess off again. Now we've got that, and um, we might plug it in and just put some air pressure on the back end here. Yeah, so all we need to do now is uh, fire it up and give it a test. I won't actually do any cutting with it. All I do is put the uh, air pressure on. Fortunately on the front of this device there is an air test switch. So I can just put power on, put air pressure on, flip the switch and it will bleed the air through the system. One to show it works and two to show there's enough air pressure there. And also I can check to listen for any leaks. And because it comes in at around, um, around 70, 80 PSI, um, any leaks in these hoses you can hear them straight away. So let's plug it in and give it a quick burn.